Hello and welcome. It's Sunday the 2nd of May. Welcome to our All Together Worship from here at Emmanuel Southhill in Weymouth. I'm the Reverend Matt and I'm the curate here. Thank you for joining us today for our Sunday worship, whoever or wherever you might be joining us from. Now we would love to connect with you and one way you can do that is via our Facebook page. So why don't you say hello when you can? You join us today as we continue our series looking at the great I am sayings of Jesus as we find them in God's special book, the Bible. So far, Jesus has said, I am the bread of life and I am the light of the world. Now, if you want to catch up with what Jesus said, you'll find those previous talks here on our YouTube channel. So why don't you check them out if you haven't already watched them? So today we're going to be looking at when Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. We'll hear all about that later in our service today. So why don't you stick around to find out more? As we begin our worship today, let me just share some words from Psalm 23. that talks all about how God is like a shepherd in our life. And this is from the message version. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid. When you walk at my side, your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. What wonderful words to start our worship today. And before we sing our first song together, let me just pray for us all. So let's pray. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Help us if we are feeling lost, lonely or just confused with all that life is at the moment. Help us to be more like Jesus so that our lives might praise you today. Amen.
The reading is from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 11 to 18, and I'll be reading it from the message. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd puts the sheep before himself, sacrifices himself if necessary. A hired man is not a real shepherd. The sheep mean nothing to him. He sees a wolf come and runs for it, leaving the sheep to be ravaged and scattered by the wolf. He's only in it for the money. The sheep don't matter to him. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and my own sheep know me. In the same way, the father knows me and I know the father. I put the sheep before myself, sacrificing myself if necessary. You need to know that I have other sheep in addition to those in this pen. I need to gather and bring them too. They'll also recognise my voice. Then it will become one flock, one shepherd. This is why the father loves me, because I freely lay down my life. And so I am free to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down of my own free will. I have the right to lay it down. I also have the right to take it up again. I received this authority personally from my father. I love walking. I really enjoy walking in the countryside where there are no buildings and no people. Places quiet from all the noise and the traffic of the town. And so I often end up walking through fields full of sheep or cows. Now, if you've ever walked through a field full of sheep and a field full of cows, you'll know that there's a big difference between the two. Both sheep and cows, both animals are interested in you. They both stare at you, but I have to say I'm always a bit frightened of walking through a field full of cows because cows are really inquisitive. They stare, but sometimes they get a bit close for comfort and they can run towards you. And they are pretty big, basically loads of muscle I find them really quite scary and one day I did end up hiding in a bush trying to get away from a cow. But if you walk through a field full of sheep, they also stare but they don't run towards you. Actually they do quite the opposite, they run away. Now I really love taking photographs and one day I was walking through a field full of sheep with my camera and I wanted to get a really nice picture, a picture a bit like this one. I didn't take this one but I wanted to get a close-up picture of a sheep and every time I got anywhere near the sheep they would run away from me. I might as well have been a big bad wolf. I just wanted to take a photograph. I'm not threatening, but oh no, they were having none of it. And I have to say, I must have looked a bit silly because on a field above Abbotsbury for about 20 minutes, I was chasing sheep. And then I gave up. And as I gave up, and walked through this field with sheep scattering away from me like I was some wild beast. I grumbled a bit to God, as I often do. I chat to God when I'm walking and thinking. I grumbled a bit to God and I said, Lord, why are sheep so stupid? And I felt God say to me, Joe, they don't know who you are. They don't know your voice. Shepherds know their sheep and their sheep know them. They recognise them and they trust the voice of the shepherd. And these sheep didn't know me. They didn't trust me. And so I could easily have been a massive threat. So they ran away. 
Now I want you to think for a moment. I want you to imagine the voice of somebody that you know, somebody that you love and someone you trust. Can you imagine their voice? Now, if you were blindfolded with two people trying to give you directions and one was the voice that you just imagined, the voice of someone you knew and trusted, and the other voice was a stranger, someone you had no idea who they were. I wonder which of the voices you would trust more. And imagine if those two voices were telling you to go in opposite directions, which one would you follow? I'm pretty sure that all of us would follow the voice of the person that we knew and we trusted because we would trust them not to lead us into danger. In the story that we've just heard from the Bible, Jesus is saying that he is the shepherd and you and I are the sheep. Jesus knows us and he loves us and he wants us to be so close to him that we will always recognise his voice. That he won't be like the stranger that we wouldn't trust, but he would be that voice that we would follow because we know him. Now think for a moment again about the person who you knew and trust. Think about their voice. Why do you recognise their voice? Now I'm pretty certain it's because it's someone you talk to regularly, someone you listen to. Maybe it's your mum or your dad. Maybe it's your son or your daughter. Maybe it's a grandparent or a carer. You recognise their voice because you have regular contact with them. And if you didn't see that person for many, 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 many years and you spoke to them on the phone, you might recognise them, but you might not. You might have forgotten what their voice sounds like. The more you talk to each other, the more you listen to each other, the more you recognise their voice. And it's a bit like that with Jesus. He stands beside us always, every day of our lives. But how much do we listen to his voice? The more time we spend in prayer, reading the Bible regularly, worshipping him, the more we know and recognise his voice. He is the good shepherd. He always puts the sheep first. He always puts us first. And he did this when he died on the cross for us. Like the shepherd protecting the sheep from wild beasts, prepared to fight for the sheep, even if it means sacrificing their own lives. Jesus gave his life for us so that we could have life everlasting. I wonder how well you know the voice of God today. Do you recognise his voice? Or has he become a distant voice? He is our shepherd and he wants to lead us through every day of our life like this shepherd leading his flock away from danger. He wants to be our guide. He wants to be our protector. He longs to be so close to us that we will follow him, that we will trust him. Shall we pray? Jesus, we are sorry for the times that we don't listen to your voice. We're sorry for the times when we stop recognising your voice. And we pray that you help us this week to draw close to you. 
to pray, to listen to your voice, to open our Bibles, to read the stories about your life, to read the scripture and listen to your voice speaking to us through the words of the Bible. We pray that this week you will help us to hear your voice more. We don't want to be like scattered sheep, but we want to be able to follow you, Jesus. So we pray now that you be with us, that you guide us, and that you help us to get closer to you so that we recognise your voice more and more. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. To help us with our prayers this morning, we're going to make some concertina sheep, or if you prefer, a drawing of a sheep, perhaps with some cotton wool on. Okay, I'll show you how to make concertina sheep. Let's move these out of the way. All you need is a piece of A4 paper, um, which has been cut in half. Then what you need to do is to fold it into four, into half and into half again. Uh, it's the easiest way to make a concertina. Open it out and then fold one way and then the other on the crease and then back again. All right. Then with the crease there on the top of the left, you need to draw a sheet, making sure it goes from one side to the other. So you need a head uh, and a woolly body, tail and some legs. Don't worry about too much about the drawing. You can trim it off as you cut. Well, here's my sheep-ish. There we are. And as you cut, the secret is not to cut is not to cut right to the end. So make sure there's a gap here. So cut round. And keep going. So when you get to the head, don't cut round it, just cut a gap like so. Yep, keep the keep the folds together. Right, so carry on cutting round. Make it look nice and woolly. And then just make sure you've kept the fold intact at the end. So then hopefully you have your concertina sheep ready for the prayer. So let's use our cut out sheep or sheep we've decorated with cotton wool to remind us of the times when we have strayed. So let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our good shepherd and we are your sheep. We are sorry for the times when we've not listened to your voice and have thought, said and done the wrong things. When we followed the crowd rather than you, wanting to go our own way instead of yours. Please help us to listen to you and follow you. Amen. So let's bring our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, bless 
worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing Your song again. Whatever. the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sin like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Your rich Thank you for joining us for our All Together Worship today. It's been great to think about how Jesus is like a shepherd in our lives, helping to guard and guide us in all that we do. Our prayer is that you will know something more of Jesus from today and how what he said all those years ago still matters even today. If you're new and have got this far in the service, thank you for sticking around. Now, we would love to connect with you. And the best way you can do that is via our Facebook page, the details of which will be coming up shortly. So if you've been watching, why not just say hello? Also remember that you can now come and join us at church in person on a Sunday morning at 9am. All you have to do is book in via the email system to save a space. We would love to meet you in person. 
But as we go about the rest of our day, let me just say a final blessing for us all. May God give you his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.